Eddie Erickson, of course, will man it with uh, our good buddy Colin Schmeling. 2-2, bottom seven Yankees. Everything else is, uh, you know, uh, I think the Pirates lead the Cubs. I think the Indians lead uh, Chicago. Detroit leads the Indians. They have one rain out today. The bad weather, of course, that was uh, in the in Fenway with the Red Sox and the Orioles. I guess they'll play tomorrow. We try to get Joey Alex Cora on late last minute. We'll get him on as soon as we can. Here's Jay in Texas to start us off, and he's our Mad Dog Unleashed. Jason, good afternoon. It's your turn. How are you today, pal? What do you have? Jay. Hey, Chris. How are you? Hello, Jason. Nice to talk. What's happening now? Uh, goodbye to Roy Williams. He was a great coach. But I'm a, Red, I'm a Red Sox fan, but explain to me why the Red Sox and Yankees aren't playing the two Texas teams in Texas. you got two Florida teams playing each other. Why aren't the Mets and Washington playing their first two series down there? Baseball people have no idea what's going on. Why are the Cubs playing at home? Why is it snowing in Detroit? Why aren't they in California playing? Again, we it's go through this, too. Stupid. I understand that. We go through this issue it's every stupid. year with, uh, with cold weather cities hosting on opening day. I tell you the reason why the Yankees and the Red Sox are not down in uh, Texas and down in Houston. Because the ownership of both those franchises does not want the Yankees in Texas, anywhere near, uh, Yankees and Red Sox, anywhere near them the first couple of days of the season. They're going to sell out I'm opening day California. anyway. Well, they, they, they're going to sell out opening day anyway. The Yankees go to Texas once a year. Those are three good yeah. crowds for the Rangers. If they go opening day, they only get the Yankees in a couple of times. The Yankees are a great road draw. They only in there once, and the, the ownership of the Rangers does not want baseball to say, schedule the Yankees down in Texas on April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd when they're going to sell out one of the games anyway because it's opening day on a mm-hmm. normal year. Sure. That is the reason. That but, is the reason. The, they have to go. Yankees and Red Sox and Mets have to go to the West Coast, and so do the Phillies. All have to go to the West Coast twice a year. Why don't they start the year off on the West Coast? Well, they, but they only can go to those one cities. And good call, Jay. They only go to those one cities once. So the Yankees only go to Texas one time. The Mets only go to San Diego once. They don't go two visits. They go one visit. And a lot of the, you know, the Mets, the Red Sox, the Yankees. These are huge. Uh, these are big draw teams. And, you know, those teams that are struggling right now, they don't want to have to deal with the Yankees in April at home when, in fact, they can get the sellout. I can't kill baseball on that. And we've gone through this a thousand times about baseball with the cold weathers and everything else. You got to remember, every, the, the team that's got the, the, the team out there that obviously has the weather in a situation where they can have good weather or have the dome, they don't want the base. They don't, they, they don't want to have to be opener on the home opener every year. They don't want that. They're not interested in being, you know, the home opener against the good Northeast teams every year because that's not a good week to draw. Opening day, and that's the end of it. So, you know, you're being a little unfair. Also, the Brewers and the Rangers and Houston and the Marlins and the Rays and, you know, all these teams have to open up at home against big draws. They don't want that. Uh, baseball's in a tricky spot there. I'm going to give baseball a little break. On that one. Some things I'm not going to give baseball a break on. That I will. Here's Jay in Philly. He's with a series on Mad Dog Unleashed. Jason, good afternoon. It's your turn. How are you today, pal? What do you have? Jay. I'm doing very, I'm doing very well, Chris. First, the schedule on the door, if you let me. You're 1,000% right. You kind of stole my thunder. And I'm the guy you're talking about. I've told you in the past. I have a two-year-old. My wife was all set to do the bedtime routine tonight, the whole deal, and the Mets game gets canceled. The first thing I do, and this is word for word, I look at my phone look at the schedule. I thought I was misreading it when I didn't see any other 7 o'clock games. Say, okay, maybe I'll look again. Nothing. There's a three-hour block tonight with nothing. And I love the sport. I'm not sitting up till 1 o'clock in the morning to watch Athletics Angels on April 1st. I'm not going to do it. And here's the thought. What, all I've been hearing about is the White Sox and the young talent and La Russa and Trout. Why couldn't they put Trout at 7 o'clock on ESPN2 as a companion game? Especially with the White Sox, who's a hot team. Like, why? You're just a thousand percent right. There's a three hour dead window today, pretty much. Well, in all honesty, I as a fan will not get to enjoy an opening day game because there's no other option. And I would have flipped around and I have the package and I get absolutely nothing now. It's, co- it's completely. Hey, 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 I don't know. I, it's, uh, I mean, listen, baseball doesn't want to hear me say this, but I don't care. This is the dumbest. I don't know what they're doing. They need somebody to pay attention properly to the schedule. I know ESPN probably pays a little more for exclusivity. Take the less money and make sure you do opening day right. It is absolutely a disgrace that we don't get a chance to watch these games properly. I mean, there is nothing on TV tonight between 7 and 10 o'clock with its sport, which it's opening up. And they can blame it all they want on 
on, on bad luck with COVID. How did they know there wouldn't be a Northeaster blowing into D.C. on April 1st? What are they, weathermen all of a sudden? They don't know the weather? We all know, everybody knows who lives here how tricky the weather is. You know, one day it's 75 degrees, and the next day you got four inches of snow. If you lived in the Northeast, you all know how, April, how the weather is really until May 1st. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling that the baseball put themselves in this situation. All right, now, uh, give me your thoughts on, well, give me your thoughts on Lindor, Jay. Let me hear you, th- $341 million. Let's talk about that for a sec. Go ahead. Let me hear. Well, my, my favorite host made me look like a fool. That's the first thing I was telling all my friends. There was no way. But look, the, the, the second thing is I'm happy he signed fine. Now go out, go out and hit 320, 95 RBIs and 25 home runs. Now's the time to play. They have him, McNeil, Alonzo, Smith, Conforto, if they can lock him up. Now I want to see some results. But, look, he was backed into a corner, Chris. Uh, I, as a fan, I think, like you were saying, other fans, I had Steve Cohen's back 100,000%. He made a completely fair offer in good faith in the first go-around. If the door walked from that, I wouldn't have faulted Cohen at all. He would have had to play hard this year because he wanted the contract. And if he walks, Chris, he could have walked because, frankly, they're not in that position where they would have got the next superstar. The guy's got endless money. We could have got another shortstop. It's no longer all in on the one guy, and then you're spending money. We, there's another train coming now. But I'm happy. I hope he's happy. I will, But now I want to see results. So no problem with the signing. No problem with the length. Unfortunately, that's kind of the going rate now. They shifted some stuff around for the luxury tax. And But now I want to see him hit, not, not hit 240 with 30 home runs. I want, a non- I want to hit 320, 95 RBIs, and you know, 20-plus home runs. I, I agree. See, uh, you know, like a Bryce Harper. I don't want to see. That. I understand that, and Harper's only been decent for the Phillies. Not great. Uh, I'm with you 100. percent I guess Lindor had a press conference today. Uh, I did not see it. I mean, I'll give you some quotes here. Uh, okay, he said I'm going to be great at 38, so don't worry about the age. Uh, he thanked Alonzo for the 400 million dollar quote. Uh, I wanted to yell. I wanted to scream. Uh, but I was stuck in my hotel room, so he was happy when he heard about the contract. Uh, uh, to the fans in New York, here we go, baby. Uh, and he thanked his former coaches and teammates in Cleveland for the big deal. So Lindor said the right things today. He would have looked awfully stupid. I think most Met fans are with Jason. They would have. They, they are all on the people I speak to, and I speak to more Met fans than you can shake a stick at. Remember, I live here. And there's a lot of Met fans and Yankee fans where I live in Connecticut, and they all were on Cohen's side. Lindor would have looked bad if he didn't sign this. That's all there was to it. Uh, here's Winnie in Massachusetts, Mad Dog Unleashed. Winnie, good afternoon. It's your turn. How are you today? Winnie, what's happening now? Go ahead. Winnie. Well, you're talking about the schedule, the weather. I'd be a lot, a lot happier right now, Chris, if I came home from school today and got home at about 2.45 and I'd be watching the second inning of the Red Sox game. They canceled this game today, Chris, at 8 a.m., Right around there. It's 48 degrees. There's not a drop of water in the sky. What, what's going on? They, they canceled it that quickly at 8 o'clock in the morning this morning? I know they canceled it early. I thought the weather would be worse. And it's, the weather in Boston right now is not that bad. Interesting. Chris, it's, it's I can't about, answer that. And I'm, I'm, about, I'm about 25 miles outside of the city. It's 48 degrees here. I, I could go outside and play baseball right now. No problem. I, go, I drove by a golf course on the way home. There's people out golfing. It, and the forecast, Chris, was, was for no rain this afternoon. It was for some drops, maybe scattered up until about maybe 2 o'clock, they said. But, but even yeah, the news fair. that other people were saying last night that they're going to get the game in. It, it's just yeah, I don't know. I... they canceled it that quickly. Uh, people are moaning and groaning about it on the radio, on EEI. Let me hear your take on that. Let me go go ahead. Well, Chris, I don't listen to them. Thank, thank God. Oh, for you don't? You. I don't, okay. I don't listen to any of those guys. I'm sure they must be. I know my people at work, my, my teacher friends at school were upset. It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And, and like you're saying, too, about the, the national broadcast tonight, the, easily there could have been a weather issue in uh, wherever the game is, Washington or, 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 or Washington. New York. Washington. How they how they left that gap there? I did not know that until you uh, mentioned it. So now I'm stuck. I'm, I'm watching you know the Yankees and the uh, and the Blue Jays here. I should be watching opening day baseball the Reds with with the Sox, and it doesn't matter because there's, how much money are they really losing if they were taking a risk on not having fans there? There's going to be how many fans at Fenway? I, I don't know five thousand. I mean, how many hot dogs and beers are they going to make money off of today? If people and people are going to show up no matter what the weather is on opening day. I've sat through cold, wet uh, opening days before. 
What, why would I just? That's just so. Funny. I don't have the answer. Very disappointing. Yeah, excellent job, Winnie. Well done. Good call. I don't have the answer for you on that. The weather is decent uh, in Boston. I will say this. There is a little better feel, and the Yankees are out of the seventh inning. Uh, double play ground ball by Judge as they play the top of the eighth at 5-4-3 two, two, uh, 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 for Aaron Little ground ball to third. Um, the scenario, laugh, Steve. The scenario of the hit a rocket, actually. The scenario of uh, uh, the, the scenario of the Red I don't have the answer for the Red Sox, but I do think this. There is a little more ambiance in the ballparks with the fans. I've noticed it in the Yankee game. I know it's only seven, eight, nine thousand, ten thousand, but there is a little feel of ambiance. It looks a lot better than last year. Two forty, three forty. Where am I going? Three forty-two, eighteen in front of the hour in the east. Twelve forty-two in the west. We continue here on Mad Dog on.